Applications of Biomolecules Biological molecules are essential building blocks of life, and their applications extend beyond just sustaining life. The field of molecular biology has made significant advancements in understanding the functions and structures of biological molecules, leading to a wide range of applications in various fields. In this article, we will explore some of the applications of biological molecules. Proteins are one of the most versatile biological molecules. They are composed of amino acids and have a wide range of functions in the body, including structural support, transport, and catalysis of chemical reactions. One of the most significant uses of proteins is in the pharmaceutical industry. Many drugs are proteins or protein-based, such as insulin, which is used to treat diabetes. Proteins are also used as therapeutic agents, such as monoclonal antibodies, which are used to treat cancer and autoimmune diseases. Nucleic acids, including DNA and RNA, are the genetic material of cells, and they play a crucial role in the storage and transfer of genetic information. The study of nucleic acids has led to significant advancements in various fields, including forensics and genetic engineering. In forensic science, DNA analysis is used to identify suspects in criminal investigations. In genetic engineering, nucleic acids are used to modify the genetic makeup of organisms, leading to the development of genetically modified crops and the production of therapeutic proteins. Carbohydrates are biological molecules composed of sugars and play a critical role in energy storage and transfer. One of the most significant applications of carbohydrates is in the food industry. Carbohydrates are used as sweeteners, thickeners, and stabilizers in various food products. They are also used in the production of biofuels, such as ethanol, which is produced from sugarcane and corn. Lipids are a diverse group of biological molecules that include fats, oils, and waxes. They play a crucial role in energy storage, insulation, and the protection of organs. Lipids have many applications in the cosmetic industry, where they are used in the production of moisturizers, lip balms, and soaps. They are also used in the production of biodiesel, which is a renewable source of energy. Enzymes are proteins that catalyze chemical reactions in the body. They are essential in many industrial applications, including the production of food, beverages, and pharmaceuticals. Enzymes are used in the dairy industry to produce cheese and yogurt, and in the production of alcoholic beverages, such as beer and wine. They are also used in the production of detergents, which contain enzymes that break down stains. Biological molecules are essential components of living organisms, and they have many applications in various fields. In this article, we will explore some additional applications of biological molecules. Antibodies are proteins produced by the immune system in response to foreign substances, such as viruses and bacteria. The specificity and high affinity of antibodies to their targets make them valuable tools in diagnostics and therapeutics. Antibodies are used in diagnostic assays to detect the presence of specific molecules, such as hormones and infectious agents, in patient samples. In therapeutics, antibodies are used to treat diseases, such as cancer and autoimmune disorders, by targeting specific molecules in the body. 
Glycosaminoglycans, GAGs, are complex carbohydrates that play important roles in cellular communication and tissue structure. They are used in the production of medical devices, such as wound dressings and scaffolds for tissue engineering. GAGs are also used in the development of drugs for the treatment of osteoarthritis and other joint disorders. Peptides are short chains of amino acids that have a wide range of biological functions, including regulation of gene expression, immune response, and antimicrobial activity. Peptides are used in the production of drugs, such as insulin and hormone therapies. They are also used in the development of antimicrobial agents, such as bactericins, which are peptides produced by bacteria that kill other bacteria. Carotenoids are pigments found in plants and some bacteria that have antioxidant properties and play important roles in photosynthesis and vision. Carotenoids are used in the food industry as natural colorants and antioxidants. They are also used in the production of supplements and cosmetics. Phospholipids are a type of lipid that are important components of cell membranes. They have many applications in the pharmaceutical industry, where they are used as drug delivery systems and in the production of liposome-based vaccines. Phospholipids are also used in the food industry as emulsifiers and stabilizers. Cholesterol is a lipid that plays important roles in membrane structure and cellular signaling. It is also a precursor to many hormones, including estrogen and testosterone. Cholesterol-lowering drugs are widely used in the treatment of hypercholesterolemia and the prevention of cardiovascular diseases. Biological molecules have a vast range of applications in various fields, and their importance cannot be overstated. Here are some more applications of biological molecules. Glycoproteins are proteins that have carbohydrates attached to them. They play a vital role in cell signaling, immune response, and many other biological processes. Glycoproteins are used as therapeutic agents, such as erythropoietin, which stimulates the production of red blood cells. They are also used in the production of vaccines, such as the human papillomavirus vaccine. Flavonoids are a diverse group of plant-derived compounds that have antioxidant properties and play important roles in human health. Flavonoids are used in the food industry as natural colorants and antioxidants. They are also used in the production of supplements and cosmetics. Nucleosides are compounds composed of a sugar molecule and a nitrogenous base. They are used in the production of antiviral drugs, such as acyclovir, which is used to treat herpes infections. Nucleosides are also used in the development of cancer therapies, such as gemcitabine, which is used to treat pancreatic cancer. Lignin is a complex polymer found in the cell walls of plants. It plays a vital role in plant structure and is the second most abundant organic compound in nature after cellulose. Lignin is used in the production of biofuels, such as lignocellulosic ethanol, which is produced from plant biomass. Glycolipids are lipids that have carbohydrates attached to them. Applications of hydroxide compounds Hydroxide compounds, chemical compounds containing one or more hydroxyl groups, 
O have many applications in various fields. These compounds are often used as bases due to their ability to react with acids and neutralize them. In this article, we will explore the many applications of hydroxide compounds in industries such as medicine, agriculture, and manufacturing. One of the most well-known hydroxide compounds is sodium hydroxide, NO, also known as caustic soda. This compound is widely used in the manufacturing industry for various purposes, including the production of paper, textiles, and soaps. Sodium hydroxide is also used as a cleaning agent for industrial equipment and as a drain cleaner due to its ability to dissolve grease and fat. Another hydroxide compound with numerous applications is calcium hydroxide, CaO2, also known as slaked lime. This compound is used in agriculture as a soil amendment to increase the pH of acidic soils and improve crop growth. Calcium hydroxide is also used as a dental material in root canal therapy and as a whitening agent in toothpaste. Hydroxide compounds also have many applications in the medical field. For example, magnesium hydroxide, MgO2 is used as an antacid to neutralize stomach acid and relieve symptoms of indigestion and heartburn. Aluminum hydroxide, LO3 is used as an adjuvant in vaccines to enhance the body's immune response. Additionally, Hydroxide compounds such as magnesium hydroxide and calcium hydroxide are used as laxatives to treat constipation. Hydroxide compounds also play an important role in water treatment. For example, sodium hydroxide is used to adjust the pH of water to make it more alkaline and prevent corrosion of pipes. Iron hydroxide FeO3 is used as a coagulant to remove impurities from water during the treatment process. Additionally, hydroxide compounds such as calcium hydroxide and magnesium hydroxide are used to soften hard water by removing calcium and magnesium ions. In the field of chemistry, hydroxide compounds are widely used as reagents and catalysts in various reactions. For example, Sodium hydroxide is used in the production of biodiesel by reacting with triglycerides to form fatty acid methyl esters. Potassium hydroxide, Co, is used as a catalyst in the production of biodiesel from vegetable oils. Additionally, hydroxide compounds such as sodium hydroxide and potassium hydroxide are used to saponify fats and oils in the production of soaps and detergents. Hydroxide compounds also have applications in the field of energy storage and conversion. For example, sodium hydroxide is used in the production of sodium sulfur batteries, which are used for grid-scale energy storage. Additionally, hydroxide compounds such as potassium hydroxide and calcium hydroxide are used as electrolytes in alkaline batteries. Hydroxide compounds also have applications in the field of environmental science, including pollution control and waste management. For example, calcium hydroxide is used in flue gas desulfurization systems to remove sulfur dioxide emissions from power plants. Hydroxide compounds such as magnesium hydroxide and sodium hydroxide are also used in wastewater treatment to remove heavy metals and other pollutants. Another application of hydroxide compounds is in the production of ceramics. For example, aluminum hydroxide is used as a precursor to produce alumina, a key component in the production of ceramics. Additionally, hydroxide compounds such as magnesium hydroxide and calcium hydroxide are used as fillers and binders in ceramic production to improve strength and durability. Hydroxide compounds are also used in the production of glass. Sodium and potassium hydroxide are used as fluxes to lower the melting point of silica, the main component in glass. Additionally, 
Calcium hydroxide is used as a clarifying agent in glass production to remove impurities and improve clarity. Hydroxide compounds also have applications in the field of metallurgy. For example, sodium hydroxide is used to remove carbon and other impurities from steel during the production process. Hydroxide compounds such as magnesium hydroxide are also used as fluxes in the production of metals such as aluminum and copper to remove impurities and improve quality. In the field of food and beverage production, hydroxide compounds are used as pH adjusters and preservatives. For example, sodium hydroxide is used to adjust the pH of foods such as chocolate and olives. Calcium hydroxide is used to preserve fruits and vegetables by preventing spoilage and reducing microbial growth. In the field of construction, hydroxide compounds are used in the production of cement and concrete. For example, calcium hydroxide is used as a setting agent in the production of cement. Additionally, Magnesium hydroxide is used as a fire retardant in construction materials such as insulation and roofing. Hydroxide compounds also have applications in the field of cosmetics and personal care. For example, sodium hydroxide is used as a pH adjuster in skin care products such as facial cleansers and toners. Calcium hydroxide is used in hair removal products as a depilatory agent. Hydroxide compounds are also used in the field of textiles and clothing production. For example, sodium hydroxide is used in the production of rayon, a fabric made from cellulose fibers. The sodium hydroxide is used to dissolve the cellulose fibers and create a viscous solution that can be spun into fibers. Additionally, calcium hydroxide is used as a neutralizing agent in the dyeing and finishing of textiles. Hydroxide compounds also have applications in the field of oil and gas production. For example, sodium hydroxide is used in the production of oil and gas to neutralize acid in the wellbore and improve the flow of hydrocarbons. Additionally, Calcium hydroxide is used as a drilling fluid additive to control the pH of the drilling mud and prevent corrosion of pipes. In the field of polymer science, hydroxide compounds are used as catalysts in the production of polymers such as polyethylene and polypropylene. For example, magnesium hydroxide is used as a catalyst in the production of polypropylene. Additionally, Hydroxide compounds such as sodium hydroxide and potassium hydroxide are used to modify the properties of polymers and improve their performance. Hydroxide compounds also have applications in the field of electronics and semiconductors. For example, sodium hydroxide is used to etch silicon wafers during the production of microchips and other electronic components. Additionally, Potassium hydroxide is used to dissolve aluminum oxide layers on silicon wafers. Hydroxide compounds also have applications in the field of photography. For example, sodium hydroxide is used as a developing agent in the production of photographic film. Organic Compounds in Petroleum Production Introduction Organic compounds are a vital component of the production of crude oil. These compounds, which include hydrocarbons, are extracted from the earth and refined into various products, such as gasoline, diesel, and jet fuel. The refining process involves several steps, including distillation, cracking, and hydroprocessing, which transform the organic compounds into the desired products. In this article, we will provide an overview of the various types of organic compounds found in crude oil, their properties, and their role in the production of petroleum products. Types of organic compounds in crude oil 
Crude oil is a complex mixture of organic compounds that can be classified into several categories based on their chemical composition and properties. The main types of organic compounds found in crude oil include Hydrocarbons Hydrocarbons are the most abundant organic compounds found in crude oil. They are composed of hydrogen and carbon atoms and can be further classified into several subcategories, including alkanes, alkenes, and aromatic hydrocarbons. Oxygen-containing compounds Oxygen-containing compounds, such as alcohols, ketones, and carboxylic acids, are also found in crude oil. These compounds are less abundant than hydrocarbons but play an important role in the refining process. Nitrogen-containing compounds Nitrogen-containing compounds, such as amines and amides, are found in crude oil in small amounts. These compounds can have a significant impact on the refining process, as they can cause corrosion and fouling in refinery equipment. Sulfur-containing compounds, sulfur-containing compounds, such as thiols and sulfides, are also found in crude oil. These compounds can have a significant impact on the environment and human health, as they contribute to air pollution and acid rain. Properties of organic compounds in crude oil The properties of organic compounds in crude oil can vary widely, depending on their chemical composition and structure. Some of the key properties of organic compounds in crude oil include Boiling point The boiling point of organic compounds in crude oil varies depending on their molecular weight and structure. This property is important in the refining process, as it determines the temperature at which the compounds will vaporize and condense. Density the density of organic compounds in crude oil also varies depending on their molecular weight and structure. This property is important in the refining process, as it determines the separation of different fractions during distillation. Reactivity Organic compounds in crude oil can be highly reactive, particularly when exposed to heat, pressure, or catalysts. This property is important in the refining process, as it allows for the transformation of the compounds into different products. Toxicity Some organic compounds in crude oil, such as benzene and toluene, can be toxic to humans and the environment. This property is important in the refining process, as it requires careful handling and disposal of these compounds. Role of Organic Compounds in the Production of Petroleum Products Organic compounds in crude oil play a vital role in the production of petroleum products. The refining process involves several steps, each of which transforms the organic compounds into different products. These steps include Distillation Distillation is the initial step in the refining process and involves the separation of crude oil into different fractions based on their boiling points. The lightest fractions, such as gasoline and naphtha, have lower boiling points and are separated first, while the heaviest fractions, such as residual fuel oil, have higher boiling points. And are separated last. Cracking. Cracking is the process of breaking down larger hydrocarbons into smaller ones. This process is essential for the production of gasoline and other light hydrocarbons. There are several methods of cracking, including thermal cracking and catalytic cracking. Hydroprocessing. Hydroprocessing is the process of removing impurities, such as sulfur and nitrogen compounds, from petroleum products. This process involves exposing the products to hydrogen gas under high pressure and temperature, which converts the impurities into harmless byproducts. Blending 
Blending is the final step in the refining process and involves combining different fractions and additives to produce the desired petroleum products, such as gasoline, diesel, and jet fuel. Challenges and Future Outlook While organic compounds are essential for the production of petroleum products, their use also presents several challenges. One of the main challenges is the environmental impact of petroleum products. The combustion of these products releases greenhouse gases and contributes to climate change. Additionally, the extraction and transportation of crude oil can have significant environmental impacts, such as oil spills and habitat destruction. To address these challenges, the petroleum industry is investing in new technologies and processes to reduce its environmental impact. These technologies include carbon capture and storage, which involves capturing carbon dioxide emissions and storing them underground, and renewable energy sources, such as wind and solar power. Additionally, the industry is exploring alternatives to petroleum products, such as biofuels and hydrogen fuel cells. Innovation and Collaboration The challenges facing the petroleum industry also present opportunities for innovation and collaboration. To address these challenges, the industry must collaborate with governments, academia, and other stakeholders to develop and implement new technologies and processes. Some of the opportunities for innovation and collaboration in the petroleum industry include Research and development The petroleum industry can invest in research and development to develop new technologies and processes that reduce its environmental impact. This can include the development of new materials, such as catalysts, and the use of advanced computational methods to optimize refinery processes. Public-private partnerships Public-private partnerships can leverage the strengths and resources of both sectors to promote sustainability in the petroleum industry. For example, governments can provide funding for research and development, while the industry can provide expertise and resources. Collaboration with academia Collaboration with academia can lead to the development of new technologies and processes that reduce the environmental impact of the petroleum industry. This can include the development of new materials, such as bio-based feedstocks, and the use of renewable energy sources in refinery processes. Supply Chain Collaboration Collaboration within the supply chain can promote sustainability and reduce the environmental impact of the petroleum industry. For example, companies can work with suppliers to reduce waste and promote the use of renewable energy sources in the production of petroleum products. Consumer Education Consumer education can promote sustainability and reduce the environmental impact of the petroleum industry. For example, companies can educate consumers about the environmental impact of petroleum products and promote the use of alternative transportation methods, such as public transit and electric vehicles. Regulations and policies Regulations and policies play a critical role in shaping the production and use of organic compounds in the petroleum industry. Governments around the world have implemented regulations and policies to reduce the environmental impact of petroleum products. Some of the key regulations and policies include Emission standards Governments have implemented emission standards that limit the amount of greenhouse gases that can be emitted by petroleum. Products these standards have motivated the petroleum industry to invest in new technologies and processes that reduce emissions. Renewable fuel standards Governments have implemented renewable fuel standards that require a certain percentage of transportation fuel to come from renewable sources.
Organic emollients. Organic plasticizers are chemicals that are added to polymers to increase their flexibility and reduce their brittleness. They are widely used in many industries, including plastics, textiles, and automotive, to make products that are more durable, flexible, and resistant to wear and tear. Organic plasticizers are a class of chemicals that are composed of different types of compounds, such as esters, glycols, and phosphates. In this article, we will explore the different types of organic plasticizers, their properties, and their applications. Esters are one of the most commonly used types of organic plasticizers. They are composed of organic acid and alcohol molecules, and they are highly polar, which means that they are attracted to the polar groups in the polymer. This makes them effective at reducing the glass transition temperature of the polymer, which is the temperature at which the polymer transitions from a rigid to a flexible state. Esters are commonly used in polyvinyl chloride, PVC, products, such as vinyl flooring and window frames, and in other polymers, such as polyurethanes. Glycols are another type of organic plasticizer that are commonly used in the plastics industry. They are composed of two hydroxyl groups and a chain of carbon atoms. Glycols are highly polar and have low volatility, which makes them suitable for use in products that are exposed to high temperatures or harsh environments. They are commonly used in polyesters, polyurethanes, and PVC products. Phosphates are a type of organic plasticizer that are composed of a phosphorus atom, oxygen atoms, and organic groups. They are highly polar and have good fire retardant properties, which makes them suitable for use in products that require high levels of fire resistance. Phosphates are commonly used in PVC products, such as wire and cable insulation, and in other polymers, such as polyurethanes. Organic plasticizers have many applications in different industries. In the plastics industry, they are used to improve the flexibility and durability of products, such as toys, packaging materials, and medical devices. In the textile industry, they are used to make fabrics that are more flexible and resistant to wear and tear. In the automotive industry, they are used to make car interiors that are more comfortable and durable. However, the use of organic plasticizers has raised concerns about their potential health and environmental risks. Some organic plasticizers, such as phthalates, have been found to have hormone-disrupting properties and have been associated with adverse health effects, such as reproductive and developmental problems. As a result, there have been efforts to develop alternative plasticizers that are safer and more environmentally friendly. One approach to developing safer and more sustainable organic plasticizers is to use renewable resources, such as vegetable oils. Vegetable oils are composed of triglycerides, which are composed of fatty acids and glycerol. By modifying the fatty acids in vegetable oils, it is possible to create organic plasticizers that have properties similar to traditional plasticizers, but without the health and environmental risks. Another approach to developing safer and more sustainable organic plasticizers is to use bio-based monomers. Monomers are the building blocks of polymers, and bio-based monomers are those that are derived from renewable resources, such as plant sugars or waste biomass. By using bio-based monomers, it is possible to create polymers that have improved properties, such as increased flexibility and durability, without relying on traditional organic plasticizers. In addition to the development of safer and more sustainable organic plasticizers, there is also a need to improve the recycling and disposal of plastic products. Many plastic products end up in landfills or in the environment, where they can take hundreds of years to decompose and release harmful chemicals. By improving the recycling and disposal of plastic products, it is possible to reduce the amount of plastic waste that ends up in the environment and to create a more sustainable future for 
The Plastics Industry Another way to address the concerns about the health and environmental risks of organic plasticizers is to use non-toxic plasticizers. Non-toxic plasticizers are a class of chemicals that are not harmful to human health or the environment. They are composed of compounds such as polyols, citrates, and tartrates, and they are effective at reducing the glass transition temperature of polymers and improving their flexibility. Non-toxic plasticizers are suitable for use in food packaging, medical devices, and other products that require high levels of safety. Another important consideration in the use of organic plasticizers is their compatibility with different polymers. Different polymers have different chemical structures and properties, which can affect their ability to interact with organic plasticizers. For example, some polymers may be more susceptible to leaching of plasticizers than others, which can affect their performance and durability. It is important to carefully select the appropriate organic plasticizer for a particular polymer to ensure optimal performance and compatibility. In addition to their use in traditional plastics, organic plasticizers also have applications in emerging areas such as bioplastics and 3D printing. Bioplastics are plastics that are made from renewable resources, such as plant starches or vegetable oils, and they are increasingly being used as sustainable alternatives to traditional plastics. Organic plasticizers can be used in bioplastics to improve their flexibility and durability, and to provide similar properties to traditional plastics. 3D printing is another emerging area where organic plasticizers can have applications. 3D printing is a process of creating three-dimensional objects by adding layers of material, such as plastic, in a controlled manner. Organic plasticizers can be used in 3D printing to improve the flexibility and durability of the printed objects, and to provide greater control over the printing process. This can enable the creation of more complex and sophisticated products, such as medical implants and electronic devices. Another important consideration in the use of organic plasticizers is their impact on the mechanical and thermal properties of the polymers. The addition of organic plasticizers can affect the strength, stiffness, and thermal stability of the polymer, which can have implications for the performance of the final product. Therefore, it is important to carefully balance the amount and type of organic plasticizer used to achieve the desired properties without compromising the overall performance of the polymer. In addition to their impact on the properties of the polymer, organic plasticizers can also affect the processing of the polymer. The addition of organic plasticizers can affect the viscosity and flow behavior of the polymer, which can affect the ease of processing and the quality of the final product. Therefore, it is important to consider the processing conditions and the compatibility of the organic plasticizer with the processing equipment when selecting an appropriate plasticizer. Another important consideration in the use of organic plasticizers is their potential migration from the polymer into the environment or into the human body. Organic plasticizers can leach out of the polymer over time and contaminate the environment or cause health concerns. Therefore, it is important to carefully evaluate the migration potential of the organic plasticizer and to select a plasticizer that has low migration potential and is suitable for the intended use of the product. In addition to the development of safer and more sustainable organic plasticizers, there is also a need to improve the overall sustainability of the plastics industry. This includes reducing the use of single-use products, increasing the use of recycled materials, and developing new technologies for the recycling and disposal of plastic products. Applications of Potassium Sulfate Potassium sulfate, also known as K2SO4, is a popular inorganic salt that finds a wide range of applications across various industries. 
It is a colorless crystalline substance that is highly soluble in water and has a bitter taste. Kali sunfat, as it is known in Vietnamese, is a versatile compound that has a plethora of applications in agriculture, medicine, and industry. Agricultural Applications Potassium sulfate is an important source of potassium for plants. It is commonly used as a fertilizer in agriculture to improve soil fertility and enhance crop yields. Potassium is one of the essential macronutrients required by plants for healthy growth and development. It plays a crucial role in regulating water balance, increasing disease resistance, and improving fruit quality. Kali sunfat is particularly useful in areas where soils are deficient in potassium, such as sandy soils. It is also used in hydroponic farming, where it is dissolved in water and supplied to plants directly. Medicinal Applications Potassium sulfate has several medicinal applications as well. It is used as a dietary supplement to treat potassium deficiency in the body. Potassium plays a critical role in maintaining healthy blood pressure, regulating heart rhythm, and supporting muscle and nerve function. Kali sunfat is also used in the treatment of skin conditions such as eczema and psoriasis. It is believed to have anti-inflammatory properties that help reduce skin inflammation and irritation. Industrial Applications Potassium sulfate has a wide range of industrial applications as well. It is used as a component in glass manufacturing to reduce the melting point of silica and improve the durability of glass. It is also used as a flux in metallurgy to remove impurities from metals during the smelting process. Kali sunfat is used in the production of potassium alum, which is used in water purification, paper production, and the manufacturing of dyes and pigments. It is also used as a component in the production of fertilizers, detergents, and fire extinguishers. Other Applications Potassium sulfate has several other applications as well. It is used in the production of potassium carbonate, a compound used in the production of soap, glass, and china. It is also used in the production of potassium hydroxide, which is used in the production of biodiesel, soaps, and detergents. Kali sunfat is also used in the production of potassium permanganate, a powerful oxidizing agent used in water treatment, medicine, and laboratory applications. TFTUC Va Kong Trung Lap Potassium sulfate, or K2SO4, is a compound with a variety of applications in different fields. Its versatility makes it an essential component in many products and processes. Let's take a closer look at some of the specific applications of potassium sulfate. Agriculture Potassium sulfate is an important fertilizer for agriculture. It is a source of potassium, which is an essential nutrient for plant growth. Plants use potassium to regulate water balance, increase disease resistance, and improve fruit quality. Potassium sulfate is particularly useful in crops that are sensitive to chloride, as it does not contain this element. It is also effective in high-value crops such as fruits and vegetables, where quality is crucial. Potassium sulfate is available in different forms, including granular, powder, and liquid, making it easy to apply to different types of soils and crops. Medicine Potassium sulfate has several medicinal applications. It is used as a dietary supplement to treat potassium deficiency in the body. 
Potassium plays a critical role in maintaining healthy blood pressure, regulating heart rhythm, and supporting muscle and nerve function. Potassium sulfate is also used in the treatment of skin conditions such as eczema and psoriasis. It is believed to have anti-inflammatory properties that help reduce skin inflammation and irritation. Industrial Uses Potassium sulfate has many industrial uses as well. It is used in the production of potassium carbonate, which is used in the production of soap, glass, and china. Potassium sulfate is also used in the production of potassium hydroxide, which is used in the production of biodiesel, soaps, and detergents. It is also used as a component in the production of fertilizers, detergents, and fire extinguishers. Potassium sulfate is also used in the production of potassium permanganate, which is a powerful oxidizing agent used in water treatment, medicine, and laboratory applications. Food and Beverage Industry Potassium sulfate is used in the food and beverage industry as a flavor enhancer and a salt substitute. It is added to a variety of foods such as baked goods, meats, and cheeses to improve their texture, taste, and shelf life. Potassium sulfate is also used in the production of wine and beer to regulate the acidity level and improve the flavor. Other Applications Potassium sulfate has several other applications as well. It is used in the production of synthetic rubber and plastics as a catalyst. It is also used in the production of ceramics as a flux to reduce the melting point of silica. Potassium sulfate is also used in the production of firework stars, where it is used as a heat-resistant oxidizer. Potassium sulfate, or K2SO4, is a compound with a wide range of applications across various industries. In this article, we will explore some of the lesser-known applications of potassium sulfate. Photography Potassium sulfate is used in the production of photographic films and papers. It is used as a hardening agent in the gelatin emulsion used to coat the film and paper. This makes the emulsion more resistant to swelling and distortion during processing, resulting in sharper and more stable images. Potassium sulfate is also used in the development of color photographs, where it acts as a mordant to fix the dyes to the emulsion. Animal Feed Potassium sulfate is used in animal feed as a source of potassium and sulfur. It is particularly useful in ruminant diets, where sulfur is required for the synthesis of essential amino acids such as methionine and cysteine. Potassium sulfate is also used in the production of mineral blocks for livestock, where it is mixed with other minerals such as salt, calcium, and phosphorus to provide a balanced diet. Leather Tanning Potassium sulfate is used in the leather tanning process as a dehairing agent. It is used to dissolve the hair and other non-collagenous proteins from the animal hides. Applications of organic compounds in the manufacture and use of chemical products include chemicals such as ethanol and propylene oxide. Organic compounds have a wide range of applications in the production and use of various chemical products. They are the building blocks of life, and the study of organic chemistry has led to the development of many industrial processes and consumer products. In this article, we will explore the applications of some important organic compounds in the production and use of chemical products, including ethanol and propylene oxide. Ethanol is a simple organic compound that is commonly used as a solvent, fuel, and disinfectant. 
It is produced by the fermentation of sugars and is used in the production of alcoholic beverages, as well as in the manufacture of industrial chemicals such as acetic acid, ethylene, and ethyl acetate. Ethanol also has many other applications, such as in the production of cosmetics, pharmaceuticals, and personal care products. The use of ethanol as a fuel has become increasingly popular in recent years due to its renewable and sustainable nature. Ethanol can be used as a biofuel in gasoline engines, and it is often blended with gasoline to reduce emissions and improve fuel efficiency. Ethanol is also used as a feedstock for the production of other renewable fuels, such as biodiesel and biogas. Propylene oxide is another important organic compound that is used in the production of various chemical products. It is a highly reactive compound that is produced by the oxidation of propylene. Propylene oxide is commonly used as a solvent, as well as in the production of polyurethane foams, coatings, and adhesives. Polyurethane foams are used in a wide range of applications, including insulation, packaging, and cushioning materials. They are produced by the reaction of propylene oxide with a polyol, such as polyester or polyether. The resulting foam has excellent thermal insulation properties and is lightweight and durable. Propylene oxide is also used in the production of coatings and adhesives. It is a key ingredient in the production of polyurethane coatings, which are used to protect surfaces from corrosion, abrasion, and weathering. Polyurethane adhesives are used in a wide range of applications, including construction, automotive, and aerospace industries. In addition to ethanol and propylene oxide, there are many other organic compounds that are used in the production and use of chemical products. For example, benzene is used as a feedstock for the production of many important chemicals, such as styrene, phenol, and nylon. Toluene is used as a solvent and as a feedstock for the production of toluene diisocyanate, which is used in the production of polyurethane foams and coatings. Organic compounds are also used in the production of pharmaceuticals and agrochemicals. Many important drugs, such as aspirin, penicillin, and morphine, are derived from organic compounds. Agrochemicals are used in the production of food and fiber, and many of these chemicals are organic compounds, such as pesticides and herbicides. Organic compounds have a plethora of applications in various industries. These compounds are used as building blocks in the production of many consumer products, including plastics, detergents, and synthetic fibers. In this article, we will explore some of the most common applications of organic compounds in these industries. Plastics Plastics are ubiquitous in modern life and are used in everything from packaging to electronics. Organic compounds such as ethylene and propylene are key building blocks in the production of many types of plastics, including polyethylene and polypropylene. Polyethylene is used in the production of plastic bags, while polypropylene is used in the production of automotive parts and packaging materials. Other organic compounds used in plastic production include styrene and vinyl chloride. Styrene is used in the production of polystyrene, which is used in the production of foam insulation, disposable cups, and food packaging. Vinyl chloride is used in the production of polyvinyl chloride, PVC, which is used in the production of pipes, flooring, and window frames. Detergents Detergents are used in cleaning products and are made up of a combination of organic and inorganic compounds. 
Organic compounds such as alkylbenzene sulfonates and alcohol ethoxylates are key ingredients in many detergents. These compounds are surfactants, which help to break down grease and dirt and make it easier to wash away. Synthetic fibers Synthetic fibers such as polyester and nylon are widely used in the production of clothing, upholstery, and carpets. These fibers are made up of organic compounds such as ethylene glycol and terephthalic acid, which are used in the production of polyester, and hexamethylene diamine and adipic acid, which are used in the production of nylon. Paints and coatings Organic compounds such as alkyds, epoxies, and urethanes are used in the production of paints and coatings. These compounds provide durability, protection, and color to surfaces. Alkyds, for example, are used in the production of oil-based paints and coatings, while epoxies are used in the production of industrial coatings and adhesives. Pharmaceuticals Organic compounds are also used in the production of pharmaceuticals. Many important drugs, such as aspirin, penicillin, and morphine, are derived from organic compounds. Organic chemistry plays a critical role in the development of new drugs, as researchers work to identify and synthesize compounds that can be used to treat a wide range of diseases. Adhesives Organic compounds are important ingredients in the production of adhesives, which are used to bond materials together. Epoxy and cyanoacrylate are two types of adhesives that are commonly used in the construction industry and for DIY projects. Epoxy adhesives are made up of two components, a resin and a hardener, which are mixed together to create a strong bond. Cyanoacrylate adhesives, also known as superglue, bond quickly and are used for small projects or repairs. Food additives. Organic compounds are used as food additives to enhance the flavor, color, and texture of food products. For example, vanillin is a synthetic compound that is used as a substitute for natural vanilla in food products. Citric acid is used as a preservative and to add flavor to beverages and food products. Cosmetics. Organic compounds are also used in the production of cosmetics, including skin care and beauty products. For example, glycerin is a common ingredient in moisturizers and lotions, while retinol is used in anti-aging creams. Fragrances are also made up of organic compounds, such as floral and fruity scents. Pesticides Organic compounds are used in the production of pesticides, which are used to control pests and diseases in crops. For example, neonicotinoid are a class of insecticides that are used to control pests such as aphids and whiteflies. Invention of X-ray Imaging Introduction X-ray imaging is a widely used diagnostic tool in modern medicine, allowing doctors to see inside the body without the need for invasive procedures. However, the development of X-ray imaging was not a straightforward process, and required the contributions of many scientists and researchers over several decades. In this article, we will explore the history of X-ray imaging, including the key scientists, and discoveries that led to the development of this important diagnostic tool. Discovery of X-rays The discovery of X-rays is credited to Wilhelm Conrad Röntgen, a German physicist who was experimenting with cathode rays in 1895. While conducting his experiments, Röntgen noticed that a fluorescent screen in his lab began to glow even though it was not in the direct path of the cathode rays. He realized that a new form of radiation was being emitted from the cathode ray tube, which he dubbed X-rays. 
Rentkin quickly realized the potential of X-rays for medical imaging, and began conducting experiments to determine their properties and potential uses. He found that X-rays could penetrate through certain materials, such as flesh and bone, while being absorbed by others, such as metal. This property allowed X-rays to be used for imaging internal structures of the body. Development of X-ray imaging Following Rentkin's discovery, many scientists and researchers began exploring the potential of X-rays for medical imaging. One of the key challenges was developing a method for producing clear and accurate X-ray images. The first X-ray images were produced using photographic plates, but these images were often blurry and difficult to interpret. In 1896, Arthur William Goodspeed, an American dentist, developed a method for producing clearer X-ray images by wrapping photographic plates in black paper to block out extraneous light. This technique, known as the Goodspeed method, was a significant improvement over previous methods and allowed X-ray images to be used more effectively in medical diagnosis. In the early 20th century, X-ray technology continued to improve, with the development of more powerful X-ray machines and new methods for producing and interpreting X-ray images. In 1913, William Coolidge, an American physicist, invented the first X-ray tube that could produce a continuous stream of X-rays, allowing for more efficient and accurate imaging. Other innovations, such as X-ray film and intensifying screens, also improve the quality and clarity of X-ray images. Modern X-ray imaging Today, X-ray imaging is a widely used diagnostic tool in medicine, with applications ranging from dentistry to orthopedics to oncology. While the basic principles of X-ray imaging have remained largely unchanged since Rentkin's discovery, modern X-ray machines have become more advanced and sophisticated. One major innovation in modern X-ray imaging is the use of digital technology to produce and interpret X-ray images. Digital X-ray imaging allows for higher resolution images, faster processing times, and the ability to manipulate and enhance images for improved diagnosis. Additionally, the use of computed tomography, CT, and other forms of advanced X-ray imaging has expanded the potential uses of X-ray technology, allowing doctors to obtain detailed 3D images of internal structures Applications of X-ray imaging X-ray imaging has a wide range of applications in medicine, including diagnosis, treatment planning, and monitoring of disease progression. One of the most common uses of X-ray imaging is in the diagnosis and monitoring of bone fractures and other skeletal injuries. X-ray images can also be used to detect and monitor the progression of conditions such as osteoporosis and arthritis. X-ray imaging is also commonly used to diagnose and monitor lung conditions, such as pneumonia, lung cancer, and emphysema. X-ray images can show the presence of abnormal fluid or tissue in the lungs, as well as the size and shape of the lungs and airways. In addition to its use in diagnosing and monitoring disease, X-ray imaging can also be used as a tool in treatment planning. For example, X-ray images can be used to guide the placement of surgical instruments during procedures such as joint replacement surgery or spinal fusion. X-ray images can also be used to monitor the efficacy of treatments such as radiation therapy for cancer. Challenges in X-ray imaging While X-ray imaging is a powerful diagnostic tool, it is not without its limitations and challenges. 
One major challenge is the potential for radiation exposure, particularly in cases where patients require frequent or repeated X-ray imaging. While the risk of harm from radiation exposure is generally low, it is important for healthcare providers to carefully balance the potential benefits of X-ray imaging against the potential risks. Another challenge in X-ray imaging is the potential for artifacts or errors in the images produced. Artifacts can be caused by a variety of factors, including patient movement during imaging, incorrect positioning of the X-ray machine, and equipment malfunctions. These artifacts can make it difficult to interpret X-ray images accurately and can lead to incorrect diagnoses or treatment plans. Finally, X-ray imaging can also be limited in its ability to detect certain types of abnormalities or conditions. For example, X-ray images may not be able to detect soft tissue abnormalities or early-stage cancer. In these cases, additional imaging techniques such as MRI or CT may be necessary. Innovations in X-ray imaging In recent years, there have been several innovations in X-ray imaging that have expanded the potential uses and improved the accuracy and efficiency of this diagnostic tool. One major innovation is the development of digital radiography, which allows for higher resolution images and faster processing times compared to traditional film-based X-ray imaging. Another innovation is the development of cone beam computed tomography, CBCT, a form of X-ray imaging that produces 3D images of the body. CBCT is particularly useful in dental and maxillofacial imaging, as it allows for detailed imaging of the teeth and jaw. In addition to these advances, there has also been significant progress in the development of X-ray imaging for use in interventional procedures. This includes the use of fluoroscopy, a type of X-ray imaging that provides real-time visualization of the body during procedures such as cardiac catheterization and spinal injections. Future Directions in X-ray Imaging As technology continues to advance, there is significant potential for further innovations in X-ray imaging. One area of active research is the development of X-ray imaging techniques that are optimized for specific tissues or structures, such as soft tissue or bone. This could lead to more accurate and detailed imaging of specific areas of the body, improving the accuracy of diagnosis and treatment planning. Another area of research is the development of X-ray imaging techniques that use lower doses of radiation. This could reduce the potential risks associated with radiation exposure, particularly in cases where patients require frequent or repeated X-ray imaging. Finally, there is also potential for the integration of X-ray imaging with other imaging techniques, such as MRI and CT. This could allow for more comprehensive and detailed imaging of the body, leading to improved diagnosis and treatment planning. Challenges and Limitations of X-ray Imaging While X-ray imaging is a valuable diagnostic tool, there are several challenges and limitations associated with its use. One major limitation is the inability of X-ray imaging to provide detailed images of soft tissues, such as organs and muscles. This can make it difficult to diagnose certain conditions, particularly those that affect soft tissues. Another limitation of X-ray imaging is the potential for image artifacts, which can result from a variety of factors including patient movement, incorrect positioning, and equipment malfunctions. 
artifacts can make it difficult to interpret X-ray images accurately, leading to incorrect diagnoses and treatment plans. X-ray imaging is also associated with the potential risk of radiation exposure, particularly in cases where patients require frequent or repeated imaging.